So I'm first generation Ethiopian American. Um, both my parents were born and raised in Ethiopia, but I was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, growing up, I had my grandparents and other family members that would live with me in my house for various periods of time. So it really connected me to my culture and my heritage. And in Ethiopian culture, food is a huge part of bringing people together. We sit around a big platter, um, you're eating, everyone's eating from the same platter, and you're using your hands, you're feeding each other, it's really bonding with your food and with the people around you. Um, so I think this is where I first started to appreciate food and I got this deep love for food. Um, I remember um, when it was time to be cooking the food. It takes all day to cook Ethiopian food and the spices are so strong. I would run into my room and close the door so the smell didn't get on my hair or on my clothes because it would last all week. And I couldn't go to school smelling like Ethiopian food. Um, but eventually cooking got moved to the garage, I think to spare our couches and our uh, carpet as well from the same fate. Um, and I, I grew up in the suburbs, so I never really had any time on the farm or any experience in a farm, um, except one time in kindergarten, I went on a field trip to Domino's farm, actually, and we went to the barn and they taught us how to milk a cow. And in this demonstration, they proceeded to spray us down with milk directly from the cow's udder for some bizarre reason. And that's the only experience I have on a farm. Um, then, fast forward to my junior year of college. Um, I went to Michigan State, big agriculture school, and I pursued a degree in food industry management. Um, the curriculum with food industry management was similar to the ag business curriculum. So a lot of my classes were in an agriculture sense. Um, I took, fi my finance class was actually called farm management, so I learned about balancing books of building a barn or purchasing a cow, and everything was in commodity senses and large cash crop senses, and I just began to formulate the idea of a farm with many acres, really large, like the ones you see on the side of the highway, and still yet no experience, it was all theoretical for me. Um, now fast forward to now, and when someone asks me what I do, I can either tell them the long explanation or the short explanation, and usually my short explanation is met with a, oh, that's so cool, but what is that? So I have to give the long one anyways, and I'm gonna tell you the short one, but just disclaimer, it's not very short. I am a Food Corps AmeriCorps service member serving at a Detroit community Detroit Public Schools Community Districts, Office of School Nutrition, Farm and Garden Collaboratives, Drew Farms. <laughs> um, Drew Farm is this hidden gem, and there's many of these hidden gems, and when I say hidden gems, I mean urban farms around the city. Um, it's huge in Detroit, and Drew is this big diamond in, on the west side. It's connected to the Charles R. Drew uh, transition center, but it's owned and operated by the Office of School Nutrition. Um, all the food produced at Drew is sent to the schools that are serviced by the Office of School Nutrition. And to give you some perspective, the last year, if all the food that was produced was given to the students, in one, it would be able to feed every student at the district for one day. So I think that's pretty cool. And, I don't know about you guys, but um, Drew Farms is about 2.5 acres, and we have six high tunnels. And if you don't know what high tunnels are, I didn't know what they were when, until I started Drew, so it's totally fine. But they are big greenhouse-like structures that are meant to extend seasons of the plants inside. And so five of these six are used for production mostly and are laid out to optimize production, while the sixth one is primarily for educational purposes. So we have it laid out so that we can have the most variety of plants and different types of foods that are growing there. And every Wednesday in the fall and the spring, we have students that come from all over the district for an all expense paid field trip, and we take them into this high tunnel. 
And they get to touch, they get to taste, they get to smell, they get to use all their senses, they get to harvest, they get to water, they really get to feel like they are working and a farmer, basically. Um, so one day, it was Halloween, and I remember all the students coming off the bus, and they were all dressed up in their costumes that I know they've been waiting weeks to wear. That We had five Black Panthers, three princesses, they were incredible. And they came down, and they went into the high tunnel, and they started touching, they started tasting, they started smelling, they got to harvest, they got to water. They were getting dirty. They really didn't care about their costumes anymore. They were just really having a great time. And it was incredible to see these kids that were coming from, the, like, they, they, sorry. It was incredible to see the students that were, like, just loving to see the farm and they were touching everything and then they were asking all these questions about the plants and the the um the vegetables and then they some of them maybe have never been on a farm before some of them are just first time seeing where their food is coming from and one kid came up to me and he asked said i want to be a farmer now and it kind of took me back to when i was a kindergartner in a barn, getting sprayed down by milk from a cow's udder, and that being the only or one of the only memories I have from kindergarten, and it kind of makes me feel really happy that hopefully maybe this student might remember the farm experience he had way further down the line, and that's why I'm so happy and proud to be serving at Drew Farms as a food course service member. Thank you.